Hello everybody and welcome to another episode on Sandy Bay. So today, to begin with at least, we're going to be doing some topping down in the orchard. I've just downloaded a topper mod and I was going to use the Bomford which I used in Colbert Park Farm but decided against it because we've used it before and I wanted to try out something a bit different. So I'm not really too familiar with the brand of this um, but it looks good and I have actually tested it already. It all works perfectly and it, it's got a lot of uh, high, de high detailing to it. So it should be fun to use and when it's picked up you can actually see the blades underneath as well. So it's actually got like half an, a manual attach mod installed with it. You have to actually attach the PTO manually even if you haven't got the manual attach mod installed. So uh, we're going to get it attached, so you press Q for that. But then if you go too close to it like here, you'll see that you have to press Q again to attach the PTO but that will then in turn detach it again. So you want to be nearer the back, about here, and you can see it attaches it without removing the topper from the tractor. So now that is all attached as it should be, we'll head down to the field, it's underneath there, and we're going to give it a go. Hopefully it's going to work quite well. So yes, we're back in the Drop Nose Matthew Ferguson today. We will be changing some of the tractors fairly soon because I know that some people are getting a bit bored of uh, repetitive tractor use, but they're just brilliant tractors the ones I've got on here. I tend to change the tractors each time I change the map. So I've got different tractors, or at least some different tractors, um, on the Irish map I'm doing now. Um, the ones which are with Sandy Bay, I might, might change them, I might not. Just depends. I was planning on adding a few more, but as for removing them, not 100% sure yet. Let's see how it works then, here we go. It is all working fine. Now it's not a very big topper. It's probably best suited on a compact tractor, as you can see there. But this, except for the Ursus and the new Hond, is the smallest tractor we have. We'll get it all mowed, make it look quite good today. And in a minute, we're gonna do a bit of sugar beet selling as well, because I want to be able to afford the irrigator because I've got a plan to do some more potatoes but on this map this time because I haven't done any yet and you might remember if you watched the first ever episode on Sandy Bay you should be able to remember the first field we did which was actually field number 8 it's quite a big field but it's actually been left ever since we harvested it nothing has ever been done to it and I think it would be a bit of a shame if we didn't do anything at all so that is the plan for well tomorrow we'll probably start it, I think we'll cultivate it tomorrow and then probably next week we'll, we'll plant the potatoes in there because I really do think it should be used that field, it's a good field, it's got a good view and it's not a bad shape either so that is the plan for the coming weeks as I say I'll probably be finishing this map at episode 50 but we'll just see you know what, I might be better off going in between the trees and going over here Otherwise, I'll be continually turning around. It's not really dropping too much of the grass behind. It's actually deleting it by the look of it. It's probably mulching it quite fine. So that makes it look a lot neater in the end because we'd have to come pick it all up. You could pick it all up and you could use it, but with all the trees here, it would probably be quite hard. Try and get this done fairly quickly. Wow, you would not want to be doing this in real life. But that just shows that the animation has been put into it. The main thing is making sure that the cab doesn't hit a tree. I think I've already hit a tree once. That is when a damage mod would really come in handy. Right, so we're getting close to the end. I've done all of that area over there. Just gone neaten it up over here, and the middle part 
and then we'll be done. You certainly won't want a bigger tractor in here though because of the canopy of the tree. Very, very easy to hit them. And the beacons. It'd be handy if you could fold the beacons down actually because then they wouldn't get knocked off. I'm not really too worried about going in between the trees so much, but as long as it looks neat, that'll be fine. We should have done this really before we sold any of the fruit, but we'll be doing some more selling of the fruit very soon, because I'm sure they'll all grow back really quickly. Okay, final bit, almost finished. Once again, the Matthew Ferguson has performed effortlessly. It's done a fantastic job. I do like the drop nose. Some people don't like it, I think maybe because of its looks, but it can be very handy, especially in these tighter areas, because obviously you've got very high visibility. You can see everything in front of you. But there we go, I think we will leave it there. That doesn't look too bad. Yep, I think that's everything. So, that is our topping done for today. Makes a huge difference. And it also distinguishes it from the rest of the field. It's much more obvious. So we'll put the topper away, and I think we'll probably get a, a big trailer or something, load the sugar beet in, and do a bit of selling. And then what I'd like to do is take the class Axion up to field number 8 with a large cultivator ready for tomorrow. There is not much space left but this shed here is perfect for our topper. We'll remove it using manual attach. And because you press Q it detaches it and removes the PTO all in the same action. We'll put the Massey Ferguson back in the shed where it came from and we might use the Axion, the class Axion for the rest of the video actually because it's going to be very handy. I think the lorry which we had was rented, I think it's gone. So we might just have to use a tractor and trailer. We don't need to sell much, just a little bit, just so we have enough money to be able to do the potatoes. Yep, both of the lorries have gone. So it's the Axion today. We probably could do with a bigger trailer, but the Stuart one isn't too bad. I think I sold the Marshall trailer. I still get messages saying, why do you never use it? But I'm pretty sure I sold it, so I'm just going to double check that. Um, yeah, it would have been one of these. Or maybe it was this one. Oh, we do oh. I apologize to everyone who said, why do you never use it? We clearly do still have it. I've probably been looking at it for the past 10 episodes. Where did I put it then? I might have to check the map. Yeah, I apologise. I thought I'd actually got rid of it. Gonna have to go onto here. Go into this page. There it is. It is here. It should be here somewhere. I bet I'm looking straight at it. Well, I've done a lap of the farmyard now. I can only imagine that it's in one of these two sheds. It must be. Not in here. So it must be in here. This must be why I've never seen it. Okay, so I have actually lost a trailer. It's a mystery. I if I have actually been looking at it through in, through this episode at some point, then I seriously need to get my eyesight checking. I'm gonna have to reset it because I honestly can't see it. I really do not know where it's gone, but it, it must be around here somewhere. It should be in the field. There it is. Good. So that's that problem sorted. Please do let me know if you did spot it in this video. It would be very helpful. The only reason I'm using the Marshall trailer anyway is just because we don't use it too often. 
We've used the Stuart trailer most episodes on Sandy Bay, so it is about time we did use it. Although I think it's a smaller trailer. It certainly looks smaller. So just the one load today. We'll probably do another load another day. And we will actually be harvesting our final sugar beet field in the coming episodes. We're definitely going to do it before the end because I think it'd be a shame not to do it. We fertilised it and everything, put some effort into it. So I will do, most likely, the end of next week or the week after. Ten percent remaining and there we go so let's see where the best place is to sell this everything is very average um, sugar beet we've got a lot of it 299 at Sandy Bay stores and 282 at Littleham stores it would be because Sandy Bay stores is further away but to be honest actually no it probably is worth it because that's quite a big difference when that's per ton okay so I'm going to drive down to Sandy Bay stores and just sell this one load. We shall return with the cultivator and we'll take it up to fuel number eight. What I could do is take this trailer over to Willow Farm and leave it there because we don't necessarily need it back at this farm. We've already got a trailer. So yeah, I might take it straight to Willow Farm and we'll leave it there somewhere. Yes, the best thing to do is to take the trailer to Willow, to Willow Farm, we'll drop it off. I'll continue back over to Sandy Bay Farm, pick up our cultivator. I was going to buy a bigger one, but then I didn't realise the price. They are very expensive. Uh, so we'll either use one of the ones we've got, or I'll just rent a more expensive one. It's much more affordable that way. I think we're expecting something like 15, no we're not, this is what I said last time. No, it's something like 8,000 I think, six to 8,000 it should be. Yeah, I always think it should be something like 15 to 20,000 but not for sugar beet. I'm thinking of a more expensive crop like canola. Let's see what it is, it should be between six and eight. Yes, 6,468 pounds which is all extra. We've still got a lot more to sell. So potentially quite a bit of money there. I'm going to go up this steep hill, drop the trailer off and then continue back and get a cultivator. If you're not familiar with the field I'm talking about then we're going to drive past it in a minute so I'll show you it quickly. The gates are still open in fact, they've been open throughout this entire series. I should have shut them, but I didn't. But it's about time I did something with it. In fact, I think it was about episode five. I had to re-record that video because I came all the way over here with the plow and I got started and it just would not plow for some reason. It wasn't the map's fault, it turns out. I think it was the tractor I was using. Um, for some reason it was lifting the front of the plow up and it wouldn't work. So, we're going to just cultivate it anyway. I think the ploughing does work in this field, but I'm not going to plough it. But it's just up here. Here it is. The very first wheat harvest we did on the map. And yes, I think that is perfect for potatoes. It really is. We'll get the irrigator going. But this time, I won't put a grass strip up the centre for the irrigator. We'll just run through the crop. I think that is probably a more realistic thing to do. But as for this trailer, it can stay outside, we'll put the cover over it. And it doesn't matter that it's in front of this sliding door. We will just put it there. And we'll continue back to our other yard. Something else we'll have to do in the next few episodes is give the cows some more straw because they have actually run out. It's not the end of the world because it will just turn it into slurry, 
but ideally it does have to be done so it will do at some point so here we are in the cow field once again we've got the cultivator this is rented and I didn't think this tractor was powerful enough but I was actually amazed when I saw the horsepower of what it is I was expecting it to be 300 and something but then realized what a huge tractor it is 410 horsepower and the requirement for that cultivator I think is 300 I think it is yep 300 and that is 12 meters so this should get the job done really quickly we'll be doing this tomorrow though we won't be cultivating it today we're just going to take it up there already so we can just get going and probably do something else in that episode as well maybe even start sugar beet harvesting and yes that I know I know it was a bad idea putting that kiosk there it means that when you open the gate you have to uh, put the gate through the kiosk it looks ridiculous I'll have to move it I think but we'll shut the gates for the cow for the cows calling it a single cow uh, yeah we should get for the cows and we'll go over to our field yes I put a multiple video out yesterday we did two I did uh, gold edition diaries and just the Sandy Bay one as usual that is to make up for Monday because obviously I didn't do one and I should have done one really um, but yes that should make up for it uh, we will continue with gold edition diaries I'm still going to go for it currently I'm actually only doing one a month which seems like not a mu not much at all. I might start to do two a month. Just depends how I feel about it and everyone else feels about it. But it seems to have gone down quite well anyway yesterday's video, so I think I will be continuing. Look at that, fin number eight is literally just up there. It's just there. But we've got to go all the way around to get to it. At some point as well, we'll have to sell our oats, which we've got which we harvested a few weeks ago. Not really sure what oats are worth. I think they're about the same as wheat. They're nothing really that special in Farming Simulator. So we'll just have to see, see what they're worth. Uh, we'll go on here now. Um, yeah, it should be down below somewhere. Oats are oh, they're not too bad, actually. Obviously nothing like canola, but Yes, yeah, 610 per tonne. That's quite impressive. Especially when the sugar beet was like 200 and something. Something really low. But this tractor should be able to pull this without any problems at all. It's got tons of horsepower in it. And here we are once again at field number 8. It's tempting to start cultivating it now really. Um, I might just go around once, or go up and down once, just see how good it is, see how well it pulls it, then if there's any issues I'll know for tomorrow. Look at the width on that, that is incredible. You wouldn't want to be doing it with just like a 3 or 4 meter cultivator, or actually even smaller than that, because this is 12, like a 2 meter cultivator or something. Look at that, no problem at all. So yes, we'll get all this done tomorrow, we'll get it all finished, and then in a few episodes time, we will plant the potatoes in here. Of course, we'll be leaving quite a big border at the, the top and bottom of the field on the headlands because I want to be able to turn around with the harvesters and not have any issues. Um, and yes, I think probably the best thing to do will be to, to start the sugar beet harvest once this field is cultivated and then come back to this field and plant the potatoes. I think that would be the best thing to do. I'll just head up to the top again. Yeah, this is the same area where I was with the plough and the cultivator doesn't have any problems at all, so I'm pretty sure it was just the tractor I was using. Can't remember what it was. I think it was a Massey Ferguson can't remember the exact model number but I think the hitch was too high because it, it had a problem with another implement as well yeah 
yeah, that is fantastic. So we'll get to the top, fold it up again, and resume tomorrow. So I think we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And please do join me again, same time tomorrow, on Sandy Bay. Bye for now.